Okay, I'm back with um, a long strip of paper for my cover and just a few more calculations here. So, to determine this length of the cover, the width of the cover, um, looking at this, what we're going to do is just a few more quick calculations. Now, we already know that the height equals five and a half, oops, 5.5 inches. Um, let's determine the length or the width. Okay? Uh, the first thing we need to know is that width of the signature, and we pretty much know these, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to do the width, just measure again, and I've got four and a quarter, so that's our first number, 4.25, and um, let's open this book so you can see what I'm talking about. That would be this measurement, so that would be one the front of the cover, and we have to do the back of the cover too. So that's times two equals 8.5 inches. Um, we've already determined the width of the depth of the signature, which is about an inch. So one inch, and in my case, again, I have this spine here and then the foredge spine. So that's times 2 equals 2, and we're just going to take this, this is measuring on my book 2 inches, but I'm just, for the, for the sake of uh, mistakes possibly happening, I'm going to give that 3 inches, and so that's the overlap equals 3 inches. Okay, so we're just going to add these together, 5, 10, 13 and a half inches for the total width of your cover. Okay? Anything else, if, you, if you're not using the overlap and the, and the uh, foredge spine, you would just do the cover plus the spine plus the back cover. Okay, moving on to I have cut my paper to five and a half. I left a little extra so I have 15 inches. Let me just move some stuff around a little bit here. I tend to be a very messy teacher is kind of exactly what it's like to be in one of my classes, <laughs> in my real life classes. So I have my legend here. Can you see that? Probably not. And I have my cover here and I need a pencil. I'm just going to go ahead and mark these. So the first one is four and a quarter. That's what, this is going to be the inside front cover. I'm going to put a little pencil mark there. Move over for the spine. Let me open this up so you can see what I'm doing. Should I open it that way? We're working kind of backwards because this is the inside of the book. So we've got one inch for the spine, four and a quarter again for the inside back cover, one inch for the four edge spine and then the rest will be overlap and waist. So this is the inside front cover. Spine, inside back cover, spine, and this is overlap. Okay, 
So it's going to be like this. Okay, easy enough. Uh, let's grab the triangle again. And placing your triangle of... Let me see this. Okay, placing your triangle along the lower edge of that cover. We're going to find the first spine mark. And I suggest doing this in pencil just to make sure that nothing's running um, askew here. But if you're careful, it's usually pretty good. So let's just continue along marking, making our marks, and we will be, be really careful with this. This is um, this is where the wildness of your book meets kind of the uh, a neater formation, so that you can be as crazy as you want, but you still have an organized piece of art here at the end. So now with my bone folder, my my lines look pretty good. I've got the inside front, inside back, the two spines, and the overlap. Again, I am just going to make sure I'm lined up and score with my bone folder, which will make um, folding this together easier. Okay, spine, loop, wiggle, which is a good tip for me to show you. I'm trying not to put my hand in here too much, but you need to hold this triangle steady, spreading your fingers over it. And the last one, make sure. You might need to put on your pocket protector for this. That's okay, because, you know, math, it's good to exercise your left brain. That's what I have always, that's what I think. Okay, so now we have our lines all scored and we'll just begin folding. We'll fold. You see how easy it is to fold this now. And we've got everything folded up. It's kind of fun. We're going to start to see this really come together now. And one last check. Looks good. Of course, I have way too much paper here, but I'm just going to leave it for the time being because you just never know what's going to happen next. So, time for your spine template that we made. And um, I'm going to grab something. Be right back. Okay, so I have my spine laid out in that first spine area, and we're going to do the piercing now of the spine. So I have um, a little glue stick or uh, this removable Tombow mon Mono adhesive. A little glue stick works just as well. Um, Sometimes I can't get these darn things to work. Oh, it worked. Okay, I have a piece of a mouse pad here so that I won't scratch my table. I'm making sure the spine is right side up and placing it right there between those lines. Be pretty careful, again, um, to get that in the right place. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and holding your awl in the palm of your hand and going straight down, we're going to pierce 
each one of these holes. Okay, I have two pairs there. Try to keep it right on that line. Okay, so continue piercing all of those holes.